everyone, and welcome to the show. My name is Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, and I'm your host for Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor. And if you're brand new to the show, I want to give you a special welcome. Here on the show, we talk about all things real estate investing. We talk about single family houses, commercial, land, fixing, flipping, rehabbing, not rehabbing, you name it, anything to do with real estate investing. That's what we're all about. And I want to shout out and give a great big thank you to all of my loyal followers and listeners and viewers. We just uh, finished celebrating our one year anniversary here on the show, and we are on our way very quickly to 200,000 downloads and listens. And so thank you for participating. And by the way, if you are on iTunes, be sure to subscribe, rate and review. And uh, if you are watching one of the videos on one of our YouTube channels, uh, we love your comments and your questions that you can post below. And we get all of your questions answered. And if you've been a follower, you know that I have had and I still have amazing guests and experts here on the show. And today is no different. But before I introduce my guest, I want to let you all know that I've got a special gift waiting for you. And that is how to get funding for your real estate deals, regardless of your, regardless of what your banker, your mortgage broker, or any lender would say, because the way I do it is without relying on banks. It's got nothing to do with your credit, your verification of income, or your experience. And so, yeah, I've been doing the business now for 15 years, and I got cut off from the banks 10 years ago. I was introduced to this wonderful world of private money. And I haven't missed out on a deal in the past 10 years because of this wonderful world. So if you'd like to learn how I get deals funded and how you can get deals funded without relying on the banks, then go to the website that I've got set up for you. It's an online class ready for you to watch. You can check it out after the show. Go to www.jayconner.com forward slash money podcast. That's Jay Connor, J A Y C O N N E R dot com forward slash money podcast. Well, on with today's show. I'm so excited to have my guest. Before I give you his name, I want to tell you a little bit about him. He's got an MBA from Ohio State. He has done all kinds of ventures in the past in his career. He started a staffing company with a partner and then a short five years later, he sold it for almost $3 million to a publicly traded company. But then moving on beyond that, he has completed almost 100 real estate investments from beginning to exit. So he's got a lot of real estate investing experience. Beyond that, my guest has appeared on HGTV on a special. He's done, as I say, a lot of rehabs uh, and he's got his own podcast show with a lot of followers and subscribers. And he's the co-host of that show. It's a wealth building podcast. And the name of his podcast is How to Lose Money. <laughs> He's a frequent, we're going to talk about that. He's a frequent contributor to Bigger Pockets. And he has a fantastic book that is sold on Amazon. The name of the book is The Perfect Investment Create Enduring Wealth from the Historic Shift to Multifamily Housing. Came out 2016. And he also has a book that he's going to be coming out with very shortly on self storage investing. And he's also the managing director. We'll be talking in detail about this. He's the managing director of two commercial real estate funds at Wellings Capital. So with that, welcome, Mr. Paul Moore, to the show. Hey, it is great to be here. Thanks, Jay. Absolutely, Paul. I'm glad to have you on. And thank you so much for taking the time out of your schedule to uh, join me here on the call and so my curiosity is getting the best of me, Paul. Myself and the audience already wants to know, why have you named your podcast show, How to Lose Money? Well, that's a great question. You know, I used to go to all these conferences, real estate business conferences, but when this came home to me, it was actually at a father-daughter conference. I went to the same father-daughter conference with my oldest daughter for seven straight years. And every year, the guys would get up on stage and talk about their wonderful family, their wonderful trips, their wonderful entrepreneurial adventures. And everything was perfect. The kids looked perfect. They were all smiling. And, you know, and, and I noticed the guys around my table slouching like, oh, 
And on the breakout sessions, they'd be like, I could never be like them. They've got it easy. They've got it perfect. And I've even heard my own daughter say, I kind of wish I was in their family. They sound like they're having so much fun. Well, Jay, we got to know one of those famous families. And behind the scenes, we found out that they were just like us. They fought and argued at home. They had dysfunctions. They had issues. And I realized, as soon as I heard that, I realized, wait, there's hope. Because they're obviously great people and got a great family overall, but they've had problems too. And I decided right there, if I ever had the public spotlight, I would talk about failures and problems and pain, and I would try to bring hope. Because, you know, anything without hope is under the influence of a lie. And I want to bring hope to people by saying, look, wherever you are, you can make it, even if you have problems, losses, disappointments. And so we talk to people about their pain and their failure on the road to success. I love it. Well, it sounds like your podcast is, you know, it's not fluff. You talk about real issues and real challenges, right? Yeah, we do. I love it. Now, how did you get involved or interested initially in real estate investing and why? You know, I'd sold my company and I moved to uh, Virginia. We bought land on the top of a, a Blue Ridge Mountain here and we were kind of bored. I was 34 years old and I considered myself semi-retired. I didn't know the first thing about retirement or investing. And I proved that in the coming years when I went from a couple million in the bank to two and a half million dollars in debt. But that's another story. But seriously, my friend moved to town and we were both bored. And we said, well, hey, we heard you can buy houses on the courthouse steps for 50 cents on the dollar. So we decided to go check it out. We did that. We made a lot of money on our first flip in a few weeks and we were hooked. And, you know, I tell you, if I would have known at that time what I know today about commercial versus residential, I'd have jumped straight into commercial real estate investing. But that's, you know, that's, that's the path I've been on. What year did you buy your first property on the courthouse steps? December of 2000. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, you're ahead of me by three years. Okay. So, <laughs> I did my, Carol Joy and I, we invested in our first single family house in October, 2003. I didn't know what I was doing. And I went to a few seminars that I did not on a uh, I did not intend on attending, if you know what I mean when I oh, say yeah. seminars. Yes. You know, I tell people, you know what? You're going to pay for your education one way or the other. Just <laughs> don't do it the expensive way, right? I hear you. You know, I mean, I've paid 25000 two different times for mentors. And those were some of the most successful ventures I've ever been in. It's worth it to pay for a good coach or good training. It really is. Absolutely. Now, you just mentioned something a second ago. I think I heard you say that you went from one and a half million dollars in the bank to two and a half million dollars in debt. And then only 13 months after that, you were debt free again. Yeah. So we got to hear that story and we got to learn some lessons from your story. Well, there's a longer version of it, but the short version is I was investing in waterfront lots at a beautiful lake called Smith Mountain Lake in the Blue Ridge Mountains. And uh, we were making about a $100,000 profit on each lot, and we got fairly deeply extended. The banks were very liberal in giving us credit. And um, one of the lots was a five-acre lot on a gravel road that we were sure they were going to pave, and we were going to cut it into five one-acre lots. Well, that didn't happen. And of course, the economy began to turn. We had no idea in December of 2007 how bad it was really going to get. But I was sitting in my chair one day meditating. And oh, by the way, what my partner gave me notice that starting January 1st of 2008, he would no longer be part of the company. He was going to give me all the debt instead of just half of it. Oh, how nice. Yeah. And you know, we're still good friends today because I understood his decision. He couldn't make the payments anymore, you know, the interest payments on all that debt. And anyway, I was sitting meditating and I had this thought, WWGMD. Now that doesn't mean what would grandma do. That means what would George Mueller do? George Mueller was a great guy. He was a hellion in Germany in the 1820s, I think. And 
Then he went to England and he essentially became a pastor and a missionary and he started all these orphanages in Bristol, England, and he did it all on faith. He didn't actually have any means of support, yet he raised something like $200 billion in today's dollars. And I thought, what would he do? Well, first thing he would do is not be in debt. So I was already in trouble, but I realized that another thing he would do would be to do something completely radical. He would probably do something that you know would, would be against the norm. So I announced to my friends who told me I needed to declare bankruptcy and my wife and kids, I said, hey, we're going to give our way out of debt. How's that sound? And I wow. got crickets. That's and, radical. Uh, yeah. So, and we had no idea, like I said, of the pit we were about to fall in as an economy. It was just rumbling at the time. Anyway, starting January 1st, 2008, we began to give a set large amount of money every week to charities and missions and church that we were passionate about. And four weeks later, I met a real estate developer at a Subway restaurant who gave me this idea that turned into a light bulb moment for me that I about how to subdivide that five acre lot legally. I went down to the county. I told them the idea. They were shocked. They said our laws have prevented this for decades, but you found a way to do it and we would not prevent you from doing that. And in the very depth of the recession in August, September, and October of 2008, I sold four of those five expensive lots And I was completely debt-free 13 months after I started giving. Wow. I tell you, there's a good chance you have heard of one of my most favorite books that I have read in recent years. And the name of the book is The Go-Giver. Have you heard of it? Bob Borg, you know what? I haven't. I've heard of it. I have not read it. Tell me, is it a good book? Oh, my Lance. It's a parable is what it is with actual people's names but the parable is only about, I mean, it's like a short book. It's like, you know, like a hundred pages or so. And when you just told that story as to how you gave your way out of debt is a perfect example as to what this go giver book story is all about. And when I read, and by nature, I'm a giving person, but this book, the go giver touched me so much. Wow. I don't know how many of these books I've given away to family and friends and those colleagues because it just so much resonated. That's a big truth there. So why do you think that worked and why do you think that works? You know, I want to be really careful to not say that, you know, that there's a vending machine in the sky and this will always work because I really believe it partially depends on motive. But I think that there's a principle of the universe I would call it the law of sowing and reaping. Some other of our Eastern friends would call it karma. And I would say that you know, just there's a principle in life that when you give, you get back. And uh, in general, I believe that is true. I have seen examples where people, where they didn't, it didn't work out exactly as they thought. But I believe in general, that is a true principle for sure. Well, there's for sure a God principle put straight out of the New Testament, and that is you reap what you sow. Right. It didn't say you were going to reap directly from the person that you sowed to, Mm -hmm. right? And we may not be able to track it or or determine it. You call it the law of reaping and sowing. A lot of people call it the the law of uh, reciprocity. But you said something important there just a second ago, Paul, when you said you believe it ties into the motive of the giver. And here's my take on it. And that is, I think, a big secret in giving, whether it's money, whether it's time, no matter what it is that you're sacrificing and giving of yourself, I think a big part of the secret is giving with no attachment. Yeah. Giving with no intention or desire of, okay, I did this for you. Now you got to do something for me. Right. One thing I learned years ago, When I do something for somebody else and I expect nothing in return, I can't be ever disappointed. That's good. Right. (laughs) Very good. I like that, Jay. You are the managing director of real estate investing funds at Wellings Capital. And so let's talk about how you work with people and how they can get just these like amazing returns I've read in your, in your information that it's 
not out of the ordinary for people to get returns in the neighborhood of 15% or more safely. And of course, as of today's podcast, you may find this interesting. You probably know it, Paul, but every Thursday in USA Today, on the front page of the money section, in the lower left-hand corner, there's a little green box every Thursday. And they publish the national average yields for certificates of deposit in the nation. No, I did not know that. Six months, one year, five years. As of last week, zero, zero point nine one percent is the average yield on a 12-month certificate of deposit. So clearly, people don't know, a lot of people don't know where to go to invest their their fund, their investment capital. You know, they can invest with their retirement funds if they've got it in a self-directed IRA. Yeah. Um, Where to go? Well, you have a solution as to where they could consider investing funds. So tell us about it. Well, you know, we are really sold on commercial real estate, and I'll tell you why. You know, if residential real estate, if you take a $300,000 house in a $350,000 neighborhood, and you don't add 50000 to fix it up, but you add half a million, you're probably not going to get your $800,000 out of that house because the value is based on comps. But in commercial real estate, the value is based on a formula, which is, of course, value equals income divided by expected rate of return. It's specifically, it's net operating income divided by the cap rate. And so it's possible to force appreciation by driving up your income, and in some cases by compressing the cap rate, though that's more challenging. And so we love investment opportunities where that can be done. And we specifically love investment opportunities where there's a fragmented ownership base. And what I mean here is, you know, Jay, there are 53,000 self-storage facilities in the U.S. That's about the same as the Starbucks, McDonald's, and Subway restaurants combined. And probably thirty to 40,000 are owned by mom and pop operators, and they don't know how or they don't care to maximize income and increase the value. Well, those many of these can be acquired and upgraded and the value can be significantly increased, and the value to the investor increased even more when you add safe leverage to those, you know, some safe debt. And so these are the type of investments we're looking for. We're investing with best-in-class operators in self-storage, mobile home parks, and to a limited degree, multifamily, where we can get these recession-resistant assets that do well in most any economy. Yeah. So how does it work for someone to invest in in uh, your funds and get, you know, such high safe returns? So we're looking for accredited investors with a $50,000 minimum and they can get a hold of me if they want to learn more. Gotcha. Gotcha. So I also uh, I saw in your information that you are in the process, uh, if you haven't already, of coming out with a book on self-storage, right? Yes. You know, if you Google or if you go on Amazon specifically and look for books on self-storage, you're not going to find too many. There's a handful of self-published books. There's one really good book on self-storage marketing, but no books explaining self-storage and how you can, the various ways you can get in. So I am getting ready to publish a book on self-storage investing, hopefully this fall. Oh, wonderful. Well, I tell you what, Paul, please reach out to me uh, when you've got the book available and we'll have you back on the show and we'll just talk about self-storage. How about that? I would love to do that. Perfect. Now, one thing that you have mentioned, Paul, is you say, in your opinion, it's really critical and important for investors, executives, entrepreneurs to really discover and know what their quote unquote big why is. Tell us about that. Did you know, Jay, that if you took the record, and I don't mean the average, I mean the record profits from Amazon, Nike, Starbucks, and General Motors, added that together, doubled that number, that would be the approximate 
annual revenues generated by human trafficking. Now, I'd like to believe that if I was alive in the 1800s, I would have been an abolitionist fighting against slavery. And if I, I'd like to believe if I was an adult in the 1960s, I would have been fighting for civil rights in the U.S. Well, this is a civil right, and it is slavery, and it's been ripped. The lives of 40-some million people have been ripped away from them. Since we started this podcast, perhaps a couple hundred people have been enslaved. And it's just not okay with me. And this has affected my own family. So I have uh, made it a goal to make this message known, first of all, and then also to use a lot of our profits, my family's income, to fight this great evil. And so that's why I'm doing that. I, you know, I made a few million dollars when I was in my early 30s, and I woke up the very next day and I wasn't one bit happier or more fulfilled or less than I was the week and the month before. And so I think it's really, really important that every investor have something bigger than themselves, something they're living for. And if they realize, you know, as individuals, if we realize we're part of a tapestry that's been woven over, say, 6,000 years of recorded history, and we're part of that, then we want to find what our larger, what our role in that larger story is. What kind of advice can you give my audience on how does how does someone go about really discovering their bigger purpose and their bigger why and you know how do they go about that and before you answer the question it's in my opinion it would be very very hard for someone to discover that bigger purpose unless they truly have a servant's heart yeah. you know if you if you're going around on this planet and it's all about you then you have no desire to begin with to find your bigger purpose, to find your why. But for those of us, and I would say, you know, you know what I say, Paul, like attracts like. I, I don't know who came up with opposites attract because I want to hang around people that are like me, you know? Yeah. So with that being the case, I would say the high majority of my viewers and listeners are like you and me. I have a servant's heart. So how does someone go about really finding that bigger purpose? You know, there is a process, and there's a guy named Dr. Lance Wallnau, and I believe it's spelled W-A-L-L-N-A-U, and he has a process, he has videos on YouTube, and he teaches you to take your likes and dislikes, your passions, what you hate, what you love, what you're good at, what you're not good at, your education, your training, your experience, where you succeeded, where you failed. And this all culminates. And you you sit down and you go through all of that. And out of that process, hopefully, we'll drop out a you know, a a knowledge, a deeper knowledge of where you should be investing your time, your talents, your treasure. And that's a process I recommend everybody goes through. Lance says that most people don't come up with that until they're in, often in their, sometimes in their 40s, but often in their 50s or 60s, which was really a relief to me because I entered my 50s, not even sure what I wanted to do next. And so I'm really glad that I discovered this principle. Actually, you can look it up. It's Dr. Lance Wall now. I just looked up. It's called the Convergence Principle. And this is where everything converges and you realize why you're on the planet. That is really amazing. I'm so glad you shared that and you knew about it because there's not many places you can really go to, to really help you, you know, find that purpose. And so where do you find him? And is it on YouTube or where do you search? Yeah, I would just look up on YouTube. It's it's Dr. Lance Wall now. Just put in convergence and I believe Wallnow takes people through on video this actual process and shows you how it went, like how he took somebody in 20 or 30 minutes through the process and they came up and figured out where they go next. I love it. I love it. Well, Paul, we're almost out of time, but I've got one more really important question for you before we uh, end this show. And that is, you know, you've got a lot of experience. You spent a lot of time hanging around (laughs) The super wealthy, you, you you know, you you discovered as you said at the beginning of the show, they're no different than us, right? You know, they right. they, they they argue and fight when the camera is not on. 
So what are two or three strategies or secrets that you have discovered that helps the super wealthy attain and maintain their wealth over their generations? That's a great question. So one would be to make sure you're investing, not speculating. You know, it's fine to speculate with a small part of your uh, net worth, and as long as you know you're doing that. But in general, we should be looking to invest. Now, investing is when your principal is generally safe and you have a chance to make a return. Speculating is when your principal is not at all safe and you have a chance to make a return. And if you keep playing double or nothing with the vast majority of your savings or your investment capital, you're going to land on nothing sometimes. And then what will you have left to invest? So I think that's one important principle. A related principle is understanding the law of risk and return. Complete this sentence, audience. Low risk leads to low return. Take CDs, for example. High risk leads to blank return. Well, you would think it would be high return, but that's not necessarily true. It's the opportunity for high return. It's also the opportunity for a major loss. And so it's really important to keep that in mind. And, and you know, invest in, and I guess the third principle will be invest in things that are simple and understandable. You know, Warren Buffett said, I don't invest in internet stocks. I rather invest in chewing gum. He said, the future of the internet is unknown to me, but the internet and technology will never change the way people chew gum. And so I think it's really important to invest in something you understand and with people you really, really trust. That's awesome advice, Paul. Paul, I can't thank you enough. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I appreciate it, Jay. I feel like I made a new friend. I feel the same way. All right. Now, Paul, we mentioned at the beginning that you've got, of course, you've got your book titled The Perfect Investment, Creating Enduring Wealth from the Historic Shift to Multifamily Housing. to the uh, And so they can get that on Amazon, but you also have a free special report that people can get from you, correct? And if so, what is it and how can they get it? You know, a lot of people ask me why a multifamily author is not investing much in multifamily these days. And I wrote a free special report called Confessions of a Multifamily Sponsor. And they can reach out to us at wellingscapital.com. That's W-E-L-L-I-N-G-S-C-A-P-I-T-A-L, wellingscapital.com for that copy of that free special report. Wonderful. Paul, thank you so much for being here on the show. It was just wonderful. And like you just said, yes, I have met a new friend myself as well. Thank you. Thanks, Jay. It was great to be here. A real honor. All right. Okay, folks, thank you for tuning in. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, wishing you all the best. And here's to taking your business to the next level until the next show. Bye for now.